Imagine yourself lost in a perpetual live stream on a mysterious YouTube channel. You are powerless, unable to pause, play, rewind, or fast forward. You are chained to a pillar, forced to watch as the never-ending video drones on and on. This is exactly what we are doing with our lives when it comes to time. We go about our days, watching the minutes and hours tick by, yet time remains a mystery. We think we understand it, but do we, really? The truth is, we are like a video with no controls. We are trapped in this moment, unable to go back or forward. We are at the mercy of time, like a prisoner in a cell. But what if we could break free from these chains? What if we could scientifically crack the illusion of time? Today, we embark on a journey to do just that. We will explore the mysteries of time, I will tell you two methods to uncover the truth about time and to reveal the secrets that lie within. Please do watch this till the very end. Do you know the reason why you are currently able to pause, rewind, or go to a specific point in a video even though it depicts a sequential progression of events? It's because we live in a three-dimensional world and the video depicts a world that has fewer or equal dimensions to ours. In order to visualize higher dimensions, such as the fourth or fifth dimensions, and to understand the concept of time, we need an algorithm because it's not possible to show a higher dimension without one. Before we get into that, let me explain to you in layman's terms what dimensions are so that everyone can follow. In one dimension, objects only have length, like a string or a stick. While a string may have some negligible thickness, for the sake of simplicity, we can assume that it has no thickness at all. If you were living in this one-dimensional world, you would be restricted to moving only along the string back and forth. You wouldn't be able to move up or down, or to the front or behind the string, as you are confined to the restrictions of a one-dimensional world. Anyone living in one dimension can only move back and forth and can only see front and back. Moving on to two dimensions, objects have length and breadth, but no thickness. A good example of a two-dimensional object is a sheet of paper. Ignoring its negligible thickness, it can be considered a two-dimensional object. If you were a person living in a 2D world, you would be able to move along the flat plane, similar to how you move around on a flat surface just like these 2D yellow, green and orange creatures. However, you wouldn't be able to move up or down, as you are restricted to the two dimensions of the flat plane. You wouldn't be able to look up or down either, as your view is limited to the X and Y directions of the 2D world along the flat plane. Now let's come to our world, which is three-dimensional. You are living in a 3D world, and as a human being, you yourself are a 3D object with length, breadth, and height. Say for example, this multicolored ball is also a 3D object sitting on its corresponding 2D world. Anything with length, breadth, and height can be considered a 3D object. Since you are living in a three-dimensional world, you can move in any direction along the X, Y, and Z axis. You can move front or back, up or down, left or right, and look in any direction along the three dimensions of the world. To recap, one-dimensional objects only have length, two-dimensional objects have length and breadth, and three-dimensional objects have length, breadth, and height. If you've got the hang of it so far, Let's dive into the fourth dimension, where things get a little tricky. Unfortunately, we're limited to living in a three-dimensional world, so how can we even begin to grasp the concept of the fourth dimension and the mind-boggling idea of breaking free from the chains of time? Fear not my friend, for there is a solution, a simple algorithm that can help us make sense of it all and unlock the secrets of the fourth dimension. Get ready to hold this in your mind the concept, when we stack enough one-dimensional objects together, we can create something entirely new in two dimensions, like a sheet of paper. Here one-dimensional strings are stacked to form a two-dimensional object. Please ignore the negligible thickness of the 1D object for the time being. But wait, there's more. 
If we keep stacking those sheets on top of each other, we can create a three-dimensional model of a cube, giving us a whole new perspective on the world around us. It's like peeling back the layers of reality to reveal a hidden dimension, just waiting to be discovered. Now to enter the fourth dimension, all we need to do is stack our 3D objects together. Let us make a 4D object with some 3D Rubik's cubes. But here's the catch, we can't do it. Why, you ask? The answer lies in our inability to perceive anything beyond the limitations of our 3D world. If we try to stack the cubes, it just becomes a bigger three-dimensional cube instead of going into four-dimension. Let me explain why we can't stack our three-dimensional objects to reach the fourth dimension. It's because we can only stack dimensions from within the limitations of the dimension we live in. For example, if you're living in a 1D space like a string or a pencil, you can only stack one-dimensional objects end-to-end -end one after another making it a longer 1D object because in single-dimensional world you can only perceive back and forth. In a 2D world, you are limited to stacking two-dimensional objects only on the same plane, as you have no knowledge of the top or bottom of the plane. Therefore, stacking two-dimensional objects on top of each other is impossible from within a two-dimensional world as we do not know of any directions other than the ones in the dimensions that we live in. Now the 4D world with four dimensions. If we just add another dimension to our three-dimensional world, we get a world where we can move not only forward or backward, left or right, and up or down, but also in another direction which is perpendicular to all these directions that we can't visualize in our three-dimensional world. But the answer to cracking time lies in fourth dimension. So, we must go to the 4D world. Similar to how you go to an exact point of time in a video stream in a three-dimensional world, you can do the same to our world from a four-dimensional space. The key to unlocking the secrets of time lies in the fourth dimension as it will be a continuous endless series of 3D worlds. In a three-dimensional world, where we can navigate to a specific point in time in a video stream, in a four-dimensional space, we can do the same for our world. Imagine the possibilities if we could access this fourth dimension. Now think of a world beyond our three dimensions, where a hypertheoretical creature, existing in four dimensions, observes a hypoflatical creature in 3D. To the 4D creature, the 3D creature appears as a mere slice or cross-section, just like how a 3D creature perceives a flat shape of a 2D object. For instance, let's consider a tesseract, also known as a hypercube, a four-dimensional cube. To a 3D observer, this hypercube appears as a series of changing 3D cubes. Similarly, a 2D observer perceives a 3D cube as a series of changing squares. So, while the 3D cube is hypoflatical, being limited to lower dimensions and flat cross-sections, the 4D hypercube is hypothetical, existing beyond our imaginations and describable only mathematically. The problem lies in how we stack our 3D world. Let's consider the example of a cube, a three-dimensional object. If we try to stack cubes in any direction we know, we will only get larger three-dimensional objects. However, to access the fourth dimension, we need to stack the cubes in a direction perpendicular to all the directions we know, that is, x, y, and z axes. If you were living in a four-dimensional world, you would have access to everything that has happened, is happening, and will happen in our three-dimensional world. In a four-dimensional world, you could easily travel back and forth in time, or go to any specific point in time of your choice in 3D world. This is just like how you can access your favorite scene from a movie in our 3D world. It's important to note that we can't actually visualize a 4D world in the way we can visualize a 1D, 2D, or 3D world. Our brains aren't wired to understand four dimensions in that way. However, we can use math and geometry to describe and understand 4D objects and spaces. How do we break through the barriers of 3D, 
and enter the realm of 4D. The answer is similar to how we transcended from 2D to 3D. Allow me to elaborate. Many people believe that time is the fourth dimension, but let me tell you, that's not entirely accurate. This misconception actually stems from Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, which describes space-time continuum. Just like you move through space, you also move through time. But here's the kicker, time isn't actually the fourth dimension. In this video, when I refer to the fourth dimension, I'm talking about the fourth spatial dimension. Let me break it down for you. Time is always an additional dimension. In a one-dimensional world, like a string, as you move back and forth, time is also progressing. In a 2D plane, like a sheet of paper, when you move along the flat plane, time is present there as well. Even when you're exploring the 3D world from a helicopter, time is there as an extra dimension, which we refer to as the fourth dimension. In a 4D world, time is the fifth dimension, and in a 10-dimensional world, time becomes the 11th dimension. It's basically the n plus 1 dimension. Now coming back to the question, how did the universe evolve from 2D to 3D? The answer lies in one of the most fascinating theories in modern science, the Big Bang Theory. The prevailing scientific explanation for the origin and evolution of the universe is the Big Bang Theory. It suggests that the universe began as an infinitely dense and hot point, known as a singularity, and that it rapidly expanded and cooled over the course of billions of years. This expansion eventually led to the formation of the galaxies, stars, and planets we observe today. One of the fascinating aspects of the Big Bang Theory, is its implications for the dimensions of the universe. While our everyday experience suggests that the universe is three-dimensional, this was not always the case. In the earliest moments of the universe, it is believed that it existed in a much simpler, two-dimensional state. To understand how the Big Bang Theory explains this transition from 2D to 3D, we need to look at the physics of the early universe. According to the theory, the universe underwent a period of rapid expansion known as inflation within the first few fractions of a second after the Big Bang. During this period, the universe expanded faster than the speed of light and doubled in size many times over. This expansion was driven by a field known as the inflaton field, which caused the universe to inflate rapidly and then slow down as it dissipated. During this period of inflation, quantum fluctuations in the inflaton field caused tiny ripples and irregularities in the fabric of spacetime. These fluctuations eventually grew and expanded, creating the seeds for the large-scale structure of the universe. As the universe continued to expand and cool, these fluctuations became more pronounced and eventually led to the formation of galaxies and stars. So, how did this process lead to the universe moving from 2D to 3D? According to physicists, the early universe existed in a state known as a quantum foam. This foam was made up of tiny, fluctuating quantum fields that filled all of space. As the universe expanded and cooled, these fields became more stable and eventually coalesced into particles, which then formed atoms and eventually galaxies. At first, the universe existed in a flat, two-dimensional state, much like a sheet of paper. However, as the quantum fields that made up the universe became more stable, they began to interact with each other and create three-dimensional structures. This process was facilitated by the expansion of the universe, which allowed these structures to form and grow over time. In the limited space of the nuclear explosion in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it's believed that a collapse of time occurred within microseconds due to the release of high energy. But now, imagine the colossal time collapse that happened during the Big Bang, which is the very foundation of our three-dimensional world. According to the theory of relativity, the closer you are to a gravitational field, the slower time flows. That's right, time itself can be affected by the gravity of massive objects like the Earth. 
But that's not all the theory also tells us that time can flow more slowly for an object with greater relativistic velocity. Take the famous twin experiment, for example. Imagine one twin stays on Earth while the other zooms off in a rocket at nearly the speed of light. Upon the space twins return, they will have aged less than their Earth-bound sibling. That's right, the space twin will have traveled into the future, all because time flowed more slowly for them relative to time on Earth. And it's not just gravity and velocity that can impact the flow of time, even the altitude at which you stand can affect time dilation. Spend some time at the top of Himalayas or Mount Everest, and you'll have aged a whole 15 microseconds more than someone who spent the year at sea level. That's right, even a change in altitude can impact the flow of time. But why does any of this matter? These are also interferences from a 3D world to 4D world. To transition from our 3D world to a 4D world, a phenomenon similar to the Big Bang, is necessary. This cosmic event would grant access to time in the 3D world. For you in the 4D world, everything would have happened all at once in the 3D world. This concept is explored in many recent movies including this year's Oscar winning Everything Everywhere All at Once. However, such a powerful occurrence would cause the demise of all life, including us. Thankfully, there's an alternative method, spiritual enlightenment or liberation. Many philosophical schools promote the concept of moksha as a means to break the code of time. By attaining moksha, we can elevate ourselves to a higher dimensional world and view our existence from a 4D perspective. This idea can be understood as a journey of personal transformation, where one moves beyond the limitations of the three-dimensional world to a higher state of consciousness and being. Imagine yourself as a cheetah, sprinting through the savanna with effortless grace and speed. But as you run, you start to realize that there is more to life. This marks the beginning of your journey of personal transformation, a journey that takes you beyond the physical world and into a higher state of consciousness and being. This journey can be understood as a path towards enlightenment or salvation, where one transcends the physical world and achieves a state of spiritual enlightenment. In both science and spirituality, time and the dimensions are the universe's way of preventing everything from happening all at once. Thanks for watching. If you like our videos, please consider subscribing. Be enlightened.